Hey everyone, it's Tay. I am a trans woman and this is going to be my achievement hunting videos for March. So if you don't like achievement hunting or if you don't like trans women, you know where the door is. All right, now they're gone and probably leaving nasty hate comments down below. Who cares? Let's take a look at what I got up to in the month of March. Now, these are going to be clips that you've seen in my shorts, but hopefully uh, expanded and giving you a little more idea of what I got up to and how they were, well, achieved because they're achievements after all. And not those kind of shorts, you filthy minded people. Get your minds out the gutter. I mean the YouTube shorts. All right, let's see what I got up to. Okay, first up was Super Mario Brothers and shrooms, and this was really simple. Get a magic mushroom. I kind of wanted to do Mario Brothers to begin with, so yeah, why not? Now, this is one I'm sure everyone's done, and I'm glad to see it was an achievement, and it's basically, what are you doing up there? And it's getting to the warp zones here in World 1-2, so yeah, I, classic, absolute classic. You know it had to be in there. Okay, so this one is for Fastest Plumber Alive, which is for completing World 1 with 360 seconds left on the clock. Now, I am not the best at Mario. I am old, my reflexes aren't as good as they used to be, and I don't think I was that good at the game to begin with when I was little. So, as you can see, I'm already past the time where the achievement's there, and this is where you have to get clever and learn to exploit the game a little bit. As you can see, I died, and that resets the time. Unfortunately, I kind of cock up, and I died again. So, we'll try again, and this is where you learn to exploit some of the game mechanics in getting some of these achievements. And again, this is why I say I do like some of the retro achievements, where they've actually been really well thought out. Now, I don't know if you can do this in 360 seconds, but I know I got it this way, and it worked for me. By hook or by crook, we get those achievements. Okay, so I wasn't quite sure how to show these next couple of achievements because this is Pacifist Mario. Uh, the idea here is that you have to get through the entire world without killing an enemy and without picking up the fire flower. So you can get the mushroom but not the fire flower. So perhaps not the best way of um, presenting it and Master Plumber is for getting through the world without dying. So that's always something to look out for. Again, got to give credit to the people that put together the retro achievements for this for putting in goals, achievable goals. You know, there's a pacifist Mario for every world, there's a master plumber for every world, and that just encourages you to keep trying and get better at each level and just pushing yourself that a little bit more just to be that bit better, to try and get through a world without dying, to try things like the pacifist run where you don't kill anything. Obviously, you have to take out Bowser because, you know, he's the end boss, or as we'll find out in a bit, it's not always Bowser. So yeah, I, I, I was really pleasantly surprised by quite a lot of the retro achievements for Super Mario Bros. Although I will say they are a slog. This is the thing with the retro achievement community that sometimes uh, things I think should be moved off into a subsection for like a master level. Like the there's ones for collecting like every coin and not dying. I don't think those need to be in the main game. They should be more of a subset. Whereas there's stuff like Pacifist Run or you know, not picking up a coin runs, which we'll see in a bit. Um, yeah, include those in the main games, but some of the more master-style master ones should be probably be kept to a subsection, but that's a personal opinion, you might feel differently. Yeah, I need to find a better way of presenting these pacifist runs, because they're not, not the easiest thing to show, but man, I just like the castle designs the, towards the end boss, because they just get so complicated, and you have to think so quickly on your feet to, to get them done without dying. Although, you know, if you've got the, the mushroom, you know, Big Mario, you can you can tank at least one hit and just get through it. And use the iframes to basically run past Bowser, so hey. Right, this one is for climbing a beanstalk. Nice and simple. There's two achievements tied here. Uh, first is Sky High, and the next one we'll see is something called Boogie Beans. So, Boogie Beans is basically, because this music is so funky... It's great music, really, for an 8-bit system. Um, you do a little dance at the top of the beanstalk to get an achievement. Fun, I like it. Just something that you wouldn't think of doing. But yeah, it's a nice little inclusion past, you know, sort of the progressive achievements. You know, getting the firefly, getting an extra life kind of thing. But something like Boogie Beans, do something silly at the top of a, a beanstalk, I quite like. And this is probably this achievement here. This is Emergency Exit from the Underground. Now, this is perhaps the closest you'll get to 
an exploration achievement in Mario because obviously these it's not an open world you can't really go off the beaten track but you can find secrets and little secret rooms like this and this is the warp zone for world 4 too this one will take you to the end of the game so this takes you all the way up to world 8 there actually is two warp zones in this map and like the 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 warp zone you'd get from running across the ceiling like you did in World 1 2 and he takes you to the level World 5. This one takes you all the way to, all the way to World 8. So yeah, I like it. It encourages exploration and trying to find those little secrets like this one. Hidden mushroom. A hidden one-up mushroom. And again, you'll also see some of the progressive achievements I talked about earlier. So there's the one-ups there. Uh, you'll, you'll see in a second I'll get one for the fire flower. I think there's another one in there, I'm not sure. Um, you know, just nice progressive achievements. Good way of using achievements to encourage gameplay, uh, which I do like to see. You know, I think some time and effort was really put into a lot of the Super Mario Brothers achievements. Although, like I said, they are some very, very grindy ones. And there's games later on that I'm going to moan about the achievements on, but that's for another video for another time. And this is something I learned out because of the achievements. I didn't know you could beat Bowser this way. All right, it's fake Bowser, but yeah. Right, let's take a look at the No Coin Run. Okay, and on to our final uh, Super Mario Brothers achievement for this video, at least, and that is Poor Plumber. And this is the one I was talking about earlier that I do a little bit of explaining. This is basically you have to beat all of World One without picking up any coins. Now that sounds fairly simple because most coins are either in the question boxes or hidden in some of the uh, secret uh, brick squares and some are just hanging out so it sounds simple enough and to be fair for the first few world uh, levels uh, 1 1 1 2 up to 1 3 wasn't too difficult but it's it's there's a certain section in 1 3 and I'll talk about it when we get there uh, where it took a couple of goes because quite frankly there was a jump that made you land on a coin so you instantly uh, failed that particular achievement so it took a few goes to to get it right but I eventually get there so one 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 two pretty simple just get through them and just remember not to pick up any coins luckily this one isn't tied to you know not picking up the fire flower not picking up the stars things like that but again it goes against your nature because you've got to think uh, how do I not pick up coins simple one with one two is get on top of the map and run to the end again we can't use the warp zone so we've got to come back down and obviously it gives you a good section here to to get back down to, to get to the end of the level so you can avoid like well one two is easy but it's this one little section in one three that is really hard so as you steadily make a way through it's it this one's where it becomes about controlling your jumps and no it's not those two there that that's that's a very simple and obvious one is to just do go for the long jump I'm surprised I didn't go and try and pick up the mushroom on this run but oh well. so so far you can tell that it's it's not hugely hard and it's not those two it's not those two or those two either but it's how good you are at um, managing your jump heights and it's those two there and I just got it then but oof that I would always bugger that up and just collect that last coin right at the end and just ah, uh, it would just screw me over and then have to start you know have to die and start over again and, and the trick there is not to do the big massive jump so the jumps are kind of pressure sensitive so you have to do sort of a mini jump just to just to scoot over the gap and not pick up the coins although now i'm wondering because i can't reverse this i am wondering if it was a, a small enough gap because if it's a small enough gap you can run across it and i wonder if i was going about that wrong and making life so much harder for myself but yeah this is poor plumber you no coins uh no deaths well actually there probably was deaths i probably edited that I'm, I'm watching the cut down version of this but yeah so all the way to the end of the level and pop no coins picked up in the first world all right, let's move on to a different game now. How about something blue and fast? And of course, once you've done a Mario, you kind of have to do Sonic because them's the rules, isn't it? Well, must be for me because I'm of a certain age and well, yeah, I'm old. 
So I figured I'd do Sonic, but I didn't want to do Sonic on the Mega Drive Genesis. I want to do the Master System. I have an affinity for the Master System. My first two consoles were the NES and the Master System. So I thought just to be a bit different, we'd take Sonic from the Master System point of view and see how well it holds up. And actually, Sonic and Mario still really hold up very fantastically well, to be honest with you. And Sonic here is great. So the achievement here is Taste Like Neon, which you get for completing a special stage. So special stage is unlike in the main game where I think it is you collect 50 rings and hit the checkpoint and jump through the magic stars. Here you get them as a reward at the end of the level when you spin the little signpost, as you saw at the beginning. And you'll see here, I'm not very lucky because it's going to be Dr. Robotnik, so no bonuses for me here. But yeah! Great fun, and I love retro achievements because sometimes they're really well balanced and really well thought out, so they come out great like this. Now my next Sonic achievement is pretty easy because this is basically to get an extra life via one of the side post spins, and it's a little RNG, but there you go. Simple as. <laughs> Doesn't get much easier than that, does it? Right, now the next two achievements are a little bit tougher because these are going to be boss fights. And can I just say, even though this is not the Mega Drive with all the, the great sounds that the Mega Drive had, or the Genesis, depending on where you're from, um, the 8-bit rendition of the Sonic theme is absolutely fantastic, and yeah, it, it's still catchy. It, all the music in this is really good, in fact, they even play it up in one of the achievements. The next one, not this one. But this one is Welcome to the South Islands, this is for defeating the first boss, and I always like the first bosses in Sonic games because they... They are pretty simple. The only way you tend to die with the, the first bosses in Sonic games is when you get greedy, you know, trying to go for that that one more hit. Just that one more hit to try and finish the boss off, but just that little bit quicker. That's usually when you get cocky, and as Han Solo says, don't get cocky, kid, because, yeah, that's usually when you die. But here, nice and simple. Three to four hits there. I think it's three hits to four. Done. I move on. But this is the great thing about Sonic games. The bosses do get progressively harder as you go along. And the same case here for the Master System version. So that was pretty easy as it gets, it's wait for Robotnik to lower down, hit him a couple of times, rinse and repeat. Now we move on to the second boss, things do get a little bit more difficult, and this one took me a while to get the hang of. I'm going to be successful here, but it, there was a couple of times where it just took me a little while to, to work out what the pattern was here, so he's going to come up either side of the screen, and he can fire left or right. And what it took, uh, and how I ended up working it out was that you have to sort of stay on one side of the screen for a little while, and then jump back over. I think I was counted to like three under my breath, so that he'll fire off in that direction, but you've already moved on to the other side and able to either hit him and then land safely where he's not going to fire, or, you know, just along those lines. So, th again, there's a lot of uh, trial and error with, with Sonic bosses, and like I said, they do get progressively harder, and while this one took a little while to crack, uh, I was pretty proud of myself for getting it done, because I think we have a tendency to forget that uh, all the games were... Not unforgiving, but they did require you to do more trial and error to work out how things were done. But sort of once you crack it and you know sort of the what you need to do, they're fairly simple to beat and move on with. Speaking of moving on with, the one thing I do really, really like about the Master System version of the Sonic games is I can actually get the damn Chaos Emeralds because I suck at those mini games in the Mega Drive version. I absolutely do. But yeah, that's all my Sonic achievements. Oh, Final Fight, how I have such a soft spot for this franchise and this game. Now, this is the Game Boy Advance version. I didn't know about this version until I started getting into the retro achievement scene and finding out that there was a Game Boy Advance version. I thought, oh, I'm going to play that instead of the SNES version or, or the um, one that they released on Steam a while back. Um, it's really good. It's a really good port and it's got some nice features in it here. Uh, Damned or Thrashed or Thrasher is basically a play on the fact that they renamed some of the characters and swapped out two of the characters so you won't see Roxy and Poison. It gets swapped over to two male characters for stupid reasons as often there is. Uh, so beating the boss. Uh, this one is getting an extra life and you will see in a minute because it takes me a little while to crack this because uh, yeah, I, I managed to progress in the game to get towards the score and then died twice. So I had to use a continue to get back here to get the score. But yeah, absolutely freaking love this. Uh, the, the extra characters that introduced are Cody and Guy, but it's Alpha Cody and Alpha Guy. So if you don't know, uh, Final Fight and Street Fighter are quite well linked together. Now I'll get into that in a video I'm going to do in the future, but needless to say, the fact that you can have normal Cody and normal Guy and Alpha Cody and Alpha Guy is really cool. 
And now for the final few here is just me playing the game on hard and succeeding in beating the boss and a few other sections. So Retro Achievements likes to, it does a good job of splitting between like normal gameplay and hard gameplay. One of the hardest achievements on here, or the one I think is going to be pretty tough to get, is basically finishing the game without using any continues because, oof, that's a pretty tricky one. So we've done Mario, we've done Sonic, kind of had to do Donkey Kong. Now I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of the original Donkey Kong, but it might be because I never had the original Donkey Kong on the SNES, I had Donkey Kong Jr, which is this one. And I really love this one. Um, I find the puzzles are a lot more uh, satisfying, I, I think I get my head around them a lot easier than I do Donkey Kong. I couldn't really place it. What you're seeing here is the achievements for basically collecting all the fruit and completing the levels for each uh, individual screen. There's four screens, this is two, and we get really funky here with um, screen three. Everything's sort of kind of jungly, sort of makes sense for Donkey Kong, but, um, well, Donkey Kong Jr., should I say. Yeah, this one gets all, I don't know, Tron-like, for want of a better way of putting it. Still, a lot of fun. And final level here, and Mario, he's going to take a tumble. He's going to need an extra life after this. <laughs> Yeah, screen four cleared. Again, back to retro achievements. Sometimes they do get it really right. You know, they make the achievements really simple and easy to understand how to do. Some of them get a little tougher. Now here we're clearing loop two, and you get to see what you actually have to do to defeat the final. I can't even say final boss, but the the final screen. Um, and it's basically you have to push the keys up into the locks while avoiding the birds. And you know what? I am still got no clue what on earth those things are. Are they are they sentient traps? Are they spiders? Are they rats? I have no clue what on earth they are. Well, I seem to be really risking it on this run. It's been a while since I actually played this, so uh, going back and looking at the footage, I'm like, what on earth was I thinking on some of these things? Because, oof, that was really close. But then again, that's sometimes how you have to cut it with these. Oh, Fast Ape. Now, these are certain achievements that while not particularly tough, did have me pulling my hair out. So the idea was that you have to basically finish the level with a set amount of bonus time. You can see here up there on the top right where it's ticking down. I think it's 41 for this one. So you have to sort of get there before the time runs out and it can be tough. It was screen 2, I think, is the one that drove me nuts. That was the one I took forever to get. Now this one is really simple and it's basically to jump over 10 enemies in this level. So the easiest way to do it is find one that you can sort of park yourself on, you know, a level you can park yourself on and just repeatedly jump over the red enemies that circle around and the blue enemies that come down from time to time that Mario sends at you by flicking a lever. Yeah, the more I look at this level, this level makes no damn sense whatsoever. How does it make sense? And of course, Donkey Kong Jr. is not Diddy Kong. He is an entirely separate and different character. Yeah, I had to look that up because I was confused. You have to go down Donkey Kong law routes. There was something I didn't think I'd have to do. But there, I am Jumpman. Jumped over to enemies. Thank you very much for joining me in this video where I